Chief reached the finale of the Street Fighter Marathon. No doubt it makes sense to close with the most recent title, which just got an updated re-release, or an update if you own the original version. When first launched in 2016, Street Fighter V was controversial because at the time of release, the game was severely lacking in content compared to other Street Fighters. Most notably, no arcade mode, which was just mind-boggling because that's what every fighting game should have. But nearly two years after launch, is Street Fighter V finally a game worth having in your collection? Let's take a look. Anyway, we're going to begin with the story, so skip to this time in the video if you don't want to be spoiled. You have been warned. So first off, we have short little story prologues which just tell a character's prologue for the game. There are some cameos to be found, but the matches are just short one round fights. Not much to really say about them. The real meat of the story is the roughly two and a half hour long A Shadow Fall story which bridges the gap between this game and Street Fighter 3. The story opens with Charlie Nash waking up, so he's not dead after all. Shadow Lou is also planning something with the Black Moons, which reminds me a lot of the Death Star because everybody loves to rip off Star Wars. So there are three main stories going on here. The first has to deal with Charlie's resurrection. Gael Nash, Chun-Li, and Cammy deal with this at the beginning, although what's most surprising is that for the most part, Gael and Nash don't get much interaction. At all. You'd think Gael would be a little more shocked and shaken to see his best friend brought back from the dead. Chun-Li also spends most of her time losing her fights. For being the strongest woman in the world, she really doesn't get a good showing in this story. Cammy has a minor plot where she wants to free the dolls from Bison's control, but while the dolls are free, she blatantly attacks a cop, so she's probably a fugitive now. Although this never gets resolved in the story, at least not to my knowledge. Ryu's story revolves around suppressing the Satsui no Hado within him. It's just too bad that Ryu spends most of the story off screen, and he's supposedly dealing with Nakali, a fighter who eats people's souls or something. But considering that Ryu almost always beats him when they fight, it's a little hard to take him seriously. The real story is about Rashid, who sounds exactly like Whis from Dragon Ball Super. It's about his journey to save his friend, and it's he who bridges the gap between the warriors and the Illuminati. Everybody meets at Karin's place, which is odd considering she hasn't appeared since the Alpha days. Seems like there's a good guy hangout and a bad guy hangout. There are some moments I do like, particularly the bit with Ken's family showing up because it's a nice scene that shows what the fighters are trying to protect. Bison is also deliciously hammy. My generals are all killing each other. This is delicious entertainment. So eventually everyone goes to Shadow's base for the final confrontation. Charlie sacrifices himself to weaken Bison, thus continuing the tradition of Charlie Nash dying in every single game that he is in. Ryu kills Bison for good. Maybe? And the story wraps up with a familiar face making his debut. Shadowloo has been destroyed. However, the one who defeated Bison... The ending is slightly different from the text written in the ancient prophecy. Could it be an inconsequential error? Alone in the endless expanse of time? Perhaps. I am truly sorry. The world is destined to be ashen and barren. The balance between regeneration and destruction must be restored. So, you mean... Come and follow me, Kali. the story ends with one more Ryu vs. Ken fight because that's what Street Fighter is all about. It started with the two of them. Gameplay wise in the story mode, it's confusing because there's only one round per fight and sometimes you're on the right side which is confusing and throws me off. I do like that it's not character focused chapters, 
but this does mean that some characters get more fights than others. It's definitely not as technically sound, and it's pretty obvious Capcom included this in response to NetherRound's more robust story modes. But, it's not a bad attempt overall. New characters, we have Rashid, who fights like a whirlwind. Lara, who is Sean's older sister. Nepkali, who I already talked about. There's Fong, who fights with poison. Why is his name spelled with initials? I, I, I don't get it. From Season 2's DLC, we have Colleen, who was Gil's secretary in Street Fighter 3. Rather interesting. Ed, who is the kid who Balrog rescued in his Street Fighter 4 ending. Abigail, who was another Final Fight character, though he has a very girly name. Seriously, who names a boy Abigail? Manette, who is Rose's apprentice. And Zeku, who is yet another ninja. There's more coming with the coming seasons. When they're all out, I'll do an update to this video. Now for the graphics and presentation. This game is beautiful. The characters all look and feel so real. Although, Ken? What is up with that banana hair? Considering this takes place before 3, this means that this look was just some weird phase he was going through. The backgrounds are gorgeous in this game. You even get humiliating defeats if you knock your opponent to the side. The stages are a mix of old and new. You fight on an airplane which looks visually dazzling but seems completely impractical, but hey, video game. Also, I noticed some clipping and freezing issues. As for the gameplay, it's a different beast than 4. While 4 had a revenge meter and a super meter, 5 has a V gauge and a super meter. You can do critical attacks as usual, but the new V gauge is implemented to the new V reversal and V triggers, which allow characters to do various special moves or make your attacks more powerful. It's different for each character, so I can't go into all of them, and it would take way too long. It's all about poking your opponent with combos as per usual. Street Fighter V lays groundwork and refines for a new generation, and that's really all you can ask for. Street Fighter V is always online! When it wants to. You can buy tons of things, alternate costumes, new characters, new stages, all without spending a single dollar, in theory. Fight money can be used in place of real money, but too bad fight money is incredibly hard to achieve! So really, if you want all that extra stuff, unless you're really good at the game or online mode, you'll have to spend real money if you want everything. Monetization, one of the most wretched forms of evil in modern gaming, but there's nothing you can do about it. Now for the new edition, Arcade Mode. Rather than just giving you one path, they give you six paths depending on which game you choose. All six Street Fighter sub-series are represented here with varying levels. Fortunately, not every character is in each ladder depending on whether or not they were in that game, which means Ryu and Ken are in every ladder, and those took me almost two hours to beat. You select your opponent, and the final boss tends to vary like the Alpha game, so there's really no sense of strategy to it, so it lacks a proper final boss like other Street Fighters. But after its absence, it's nice to have an arcade mode, although my biggest complaint is that you can't earn fight money or level up. And the endings have got to be the least interesting endings in the series. They are just still images and text with no narration. Still, it's better than nothing at all. Right, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? As far as hidden bosses, you can fight Shinokuma provided that you meet the right requirements, but I was never able to actually defeat him, even on easy. Yeah, I tried to get as much stone as I possibly could, so sue me. So after all that, with all the updates and patches and everything, is Street Fighter V finally a worthy game in the Street Fighter Legacy? I would say, yes. Street Fighter V is now definitely worth your time and money. The king of fighting games does it again. It's refined, simple, and a lot of fun to play. Happy 30th anniversary, Street Fighter. Here's to many more. But we're not done with fighting games just yet. Dragon Ball Fighters is right around the corner, so we'll be taking a look at that. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button. See you later. This marks the end of an epic battle. The winner emerges with the pride and honor of a hard-won victory, but also with a nagging sense of uncertainty. The loser walks away with a heart heavy with shame and anger, ready to make a new start and fight again another day. Both warriors know that this isn't truly the end. Neither one's potential has been truly reached, and there is much hard training ahead. They'll never forget the days of exchanging blows at a fever pitch. They'll never forget the days of lost hope, of self-loathing. Once they've caught their breath, the warriors will return to the ring. This is the burden of the true fighter. There is no other choice. Who knows where the next opponent lies?
This story may be over, but the battle is just beginning.